What can I say? Caracol out time with Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven. And I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Thank you very much, Nuri, for being so kind as to join me on this care collab with the Dinard Blue Heaven. You are absolutely right. Being such a gorgeous orchid, there is not enough information about her out there. So I hope that our two videos will start putting a dent into that. I'm going to take her out of the sun because we can appreciate the blooms so much better with a little bit of shade. But I just wanted to show you what she does in the sunshine just before we set up more in the shaded space. And I hope you can see that chrysaline effect. Oh my goodness. I mean, I do love blooms in the sun, but it, it doesn't come across the same way on camera. So let's go to the staging area and let's have a talk about Catlia Dinar Blue Heaven. And a heads up, Nuri's link is in my description below. If, for example, what you hear here is not quite compatible with your climate and how you would like to grow a Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven. I am in southern Spain. I have very, very intermediate temperatures, as they would say. My definition of cold is anything below 10 degrees the minute you hit single digits in Celsius, that is. That is when I consider it cold, not so for many orchids, but yeah, so my temperatures go from winter lows of 5 degrees Celsius to summer highs of 40 degrees Celsius, which is not conducive for this orchid when it comes to the lows. I have an inside grow room, which is my dining room, which is not a dining room anymore. I should now call it a grow space. But as it is only a grow space for three months of the year, maybe four months of the year, uh, I struggle with calling it my grow space, but we don't use it for dining anyway, because when it's all summer and beautiful outside, we're outside. So grow space it is. I have an indoor grow space for three to four months of the year to house orchids that cannot tolerate temperatures below 15 degrees Celsius. And that is because of my setup. Lekka and self-watering, that is my jam. And that is why I say 15 degrees Celsius. Catlia Dinar Blue Heaven would probably be able to tolerate temperatures down to 12, if in a different setup, if it were cultivated in a wet dry cycle, mine is not. So I always consider a three degree differential between what is the ambient temperature as opposed to what's happening in my pot because of the evaporative cooling characteristic that Lekka has. So if my night temperatures start to go lower than 15 degrees Celsius, this orchid comes indoors and then stays indoors overnight on the top shelf of my indoor grow rack where there are purple lights, seeing as during the winter she is not in bloom. This video is being recorded in October of 2021, so she will have bloomed out by the time those temperatures drop and she has to come indoors. During that time period, she is resting, in adverted commas, resting. So I don't fertilize her at all throughout the winter. Not a single dose of fertilizer because nothing is going on. She will not be growing a new growth. She has finished also growing her roots by the time these blooms will drop. Her root growth is active right now as well, but it's slowly coming to an end. And once the blooms drop, that means this orchid is in rest mode. And when I say rest mode, I don't mean that I keep my Lekka and self-watering system dry. It gets flushed through with plain RO water ever so often to keep the microfiber in the reservoir wet at all times. Whether I have water in the deposit or not, that doesn't matter. The microfiber in my case cannot dry out because I don't want to lose the efficacy of the wicking potential of my Lekka. That is my winter care, just making sure that the microfibers never go damp. The deposit currently is relatively full, but that is because she is in bloom and I'm still getting beautiful temperatures during the day of 25 degrees Celsius and my night temperatures are around 19, 20 degrees. So she is still needing that sustenance with regards to water and there's 300 parts per million of fertilizer in that reservoir to help her through the blooming phase so that she gets maximum potential and I get a maximum joy. In the winter, like I said, no fertilizer. And that will be the case until such a time when in spring, usually around May, beginning of June, 
and I will start to swell up at the base and that will be her next new growth. That is when I immediately start with 300 parts per million. There is no in-between with this orchid because look at the size of the structures. It is go time the minute I see an eye swelling and this is already bulging a little bit, but this one will stay that way all the way until next year, end of May, June. Then she starts to grow enormous structures, enormous leaves. Everything about this orchid is enormous. I love it. It's just a single leaf, but the strength of this leaf, it feels just like a piece of slate. Incredible. I think you could eat off of it. And then enormous sheaths come out and it takes quite some time to then see enormous blooms. And that is why I fertilize straight away the minute I see that eye moving, not just swelling, but on the move with 300 parts per million of fertilizer. And that is how it stayed up until now, still all these months, 300 parts per million, nonstop, a lot of flushing. Every time the reservoir is empty, I then flush her through and I use the mask as my measure. So two times the mask of plain RO water goes into the pot just as a flush before filling up with 300 parts per million again. I don't have any mineral buildup up here on my leka and I'm quite pleased about that. And I believe this is remnants of a bird feather. Yep, it is. Dander. <laughs> yes, I have an Australian galah cockatoo and uh, yeah, spreading his wings sometimes. Anyway. So no mineral deposit on the surface of the pot, 300 parts per million, even if it is for six to seven months, not a big deal. You can see that the orchid needs it and possibly I could push it a little higher, but I'm not going to. I can see from the past years that she's quite happy with the doses that she's getting and her structures are big enough to do what she's doing right now. The blooms are, well, self-explanatory really <laughs> i have to i have to say um yes i wouldn't want to step back much further to admire these blooms because as of two meters away you won't notice the fragrance that you do when you are up close like i am right now one meter away this fragrance is incredible it is a very very heavily seasoned cinnamon toast but heavy on the cinnamon side and heavy on the sugar side delicious. There's no two ways about it. If you like the smell of cinnamon, this is not a cinnamon that is spicy. This is a cinnamon fragrance that will draw you into the kitchen as opposed to your grow space to smell the bloom. It's delicious and it is relatively strong. And I say that in a positive sense. It is something that if you have this orchid in the house and you smell the fragrance, it is an air fresher second to none, but it is homegrown. The blooms will last about three and a half weeks. These blooms have now been open a good two weeks. I've enjoyed them a lot. The color when she opens, especially on the sepals, is a little bit on the chartreuse green with a hint of lavender, but that changes very, very quickly. And she starts to deepen and darken a little bit more into the baby lavender kind of color. It's not pink, it's a lavender beautiful structures and veining in the petals as well. It's like rich tissue paper that you would wrap gifts in. She has also has a chrysaline effect if she's in the sun. If I put her in the sun right now though, we would be blinded and we wouldn't be able to see the detail of the throat and the size of the nose in there. Yeah, stick your nose in there and you'll be overwhelmed with how delicious she smells. So about three weeks is the bloom time when they look pristine. Four weeks pushing it, depending on the temperatures as I grow outside in this time of year, depending on the wind, strength, etc. But definitely three weeks of this beautiful orchid that in my opinion is not that difficult to grow. Yes, she requires a lot of light, but on the other hand, she doesn't want any direct sun. And that can be achieved also inside, indoors, even if you don't have grow lights on a windowsill. She is compact growing despite her size. You can consider her a large orchid, but a space saver as well. Her rhizome is very, very tight together. She's not a rambler. She's not a climber. She's got all the attributes of being a beautiful orchid that you can grow indoors on a windowsill. And you can also see how beautifully upright her leaves grow. Despite being so large, I would consider her a compact grower. I know that sounds contradictory, 
but considering that space is always an issue for us orchid growers, the Catlia Dinard, Blue Heaven, if I were a salesperson in my nursery, I would have listed all of these factors and told you why you need to have this orchid if you don't already have her. I hope I covered everything in this video. <laughs> when you look at this through the viewfinder, it's like keep focused, stay focused, keep talking about what you're supposed to be talking about, stop the wandering thoughts. So yeah, if for whatever reason, <laughs> blooms being the reason, I didn't finish a thought or maybe I didn't cover something that you would like to know about, then please leave your questions or your comments, your observations, everything in the comments below and let's touch base on that. In the meantime, Nuri, thank you so much for your time, for doing your video. I really, really appreciate it. Everybody else, your time watching my video, also very much appreciated. So, for now, from Katlia Dinard Blue Heaven and myself, have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.